Hello everybody, so today we're going to look at a library called DanJS, which is a neural network library for JavaScript. The creator of this library actually reached out to me and asked if we could do a video, and after looking at all of the different libraries, I do agree this is one of the quickest ways to set up a neural network. But of course, before we start using a library, you should always understand and have a good grasp of how neural networks work. So here's a general overview. So neural networks, although they seem complicated, it's really just a regular function with inputs and outputs. For example, as an input, we can have a number like 3. We can multiply it by something, let's say uh, 2, and then so we add a number to it. So we can say uh, 4. So basically what you get is 3 times 2 is 6, and then plus 4 equals 10, and you do that. And this really is how just a neuron works, but we draw it in a different way to kind of represent it a bit better. So what we do is draw a circle, and then an output and an input. So of course the input would be 3, and then you multiply it by 2, and then you add 4, and the output is 10. So that's a very simple neuron. So in neural network terminology, this would, the multiplier would be called a weight, and the thing that's adding it would be called a bias. So these are the two things that you use to modify the input. And the reason that we draw neurons like this is because they can have multiple inputs. So to add a new input, we can just draw another line. Let's say this one is like negative 1 or something. It also has its own weight, let's say times uh, 3, and then another bias, let's say plus 1. And now what we do is that we have three numbers, right? This would be negative 3, and then plus 1 is negative 2, and then this is 10. So what we do is basically add these up, and the final result would be 8, like that. But you might notice because we're adding them up, we don't actually need an individual bias. We can just have one bias that actually does everything, right? So we can do like one bias in the middle that's plus five. But of course, what we have here is just one simple neuron. And with a network, like with multiple neurons combined together, you can compute very, very complex things. So we can make a neuron, for example, here, and we can just pass in the same inputs. But that doesn't mean it will necessarily give you the same outputs, because this can have its own different weights and biases from the previous one. So that even though the inputs are the same because we multiply and add different amounts, this output would be different. And we can even connect it to even more neurons, right? We can maybe connect the output of this to another neuron, and connect the output of that to another neuron. And it is always good to connect all of these neurons that kind of together, right? Pass, in the, pass each individual neuron to both of the previous ones. This is called a densely connected network. And you don't just need to have two uh, neurons here. You might have uh, three, like that, and then you can connect the outputs of these two here. Another thing to clarify is that although this looks like it's splitting up, it doesn't have different like individual outputs. All three of these outputs are the same, it's just getting fed into three different uh, neurons. And maybe you want the final output to be just one number, so you can think of it as kind of like that. And Maybe you can make a new neuron and connect the output of the last three layers to it. And then this can be the final output. But there's a critical problem with this model of the neural network. And that is because each neuron is linear. And what I mean by that is that if you remember, we have an input and then multiply it by a number and then add it by a number. This might remind you of something like y equals mx plus b, right? Which is a linear function. Which means that if you learn in algebra, if you have two uh, different lines, right, maybe if you have a line like that and another like that, when you add them together, it will just give you a new line. It's not going to give you a curve or anything, right? When you add them together, it's just going to give you a new line that looks something like that, maybe. So basically what I'm saying is that no matter how many neurons you connect, because each of them is linear, the output will also be linear, which means that you really don't need this much complexity. You can model all of this network with just one neuron. But if the output of each thing, if this isn't a linear function, right, if it isn't a linear function, like let's say if it was curved like that, you can add it to a different curve, maybe this curve would be something like this, the output would be a completely different curve, maybe something like that, of course, I'm just randomly scribbling, but you get my point, right? If you have different curves and add them together, it's going to give you more complex shapes. But if you just have a linear function and add them together, it's not going to give you more complex shapes. So what we can do to fix this is essentially wrap this linear function inside a nonlinear function. And there's multiple different ones you can do. For example, a good one is uh, tan h or tan to the power of negative 1, something like that. 
and 10H, the graph of it looks something like this, so you can see it's obviously curved. So if you add two different 10Hs together, it might give you something like this, right? So it will have a different curve that will that as you add new neurons to it, it will get more and more complex and it has the ability to be something that's more complex than just a 10H curve alone. And in this model of the neural network, what that means is basically before we just pass these outputs into this, we kind of pass this through the function and then pass it into that. So now we have this network that can do complex stuff. You might be wondering like, what's so intelligent about this? Like, if you just have random weights, random functions, random curves, all it's going to give you if you give you, if you're passing these inputs, it's just a bunch of like random gibberish, right? And that's true. But the intelligent part about this is that if you give it some inputs and give it also what you expect that it should output, it can automatically adjust these weights and biases of every single neuron for it to kind of match and correspond to the inputs and outputs that you think it should give. So you can give it a bunch of inputs and give it a bunch of things that it should output kind of like as examples or in this case also called training data. And then it can take these training data, make the function match all of these training data, and hopefully the goal is, if you give a new data that it has never seen before, it can kind of predict the output. The algorithm for automatically changing the weights and biases is something called backpropagation, and I really don't have time to explain it right now, it's a bunch of calculus and whatever, but I will link a few resources on the screen that you can go to. But really, this is just how simple neural networks are, right? It's just a bunch of neurons that are a bunch of functions connected to each other and the outputs of value. The only intelligent part is that it can automatically change the weights and biases for it to output the desired value. Okay, so now that we're done with explaining, let's just get started coding. So I'm going to create a new file in my text editor, save it, call it index.html. So I decided to run JavaScript in the web because that's easier to understand and set up for most people than NPM. So save it as index.html, type HTML for it to autocomplete, name it something like dan.js, and then we can use a script tab, right? And then we can use src, link it, and the website actually, if you go there, has a very helpful CDN that you can just copy and paste. So just do that, and now you loaded their library. And of course, we need our own script file, so we're going to type another script tab, and this time src, we're going to do script and now we're going to leave the body empty and just create a new file, name is script.js, save, and now we're ready to get started actually coding the neural network. So now I have opened up the HTML file on the browser there on the right side of my screen, and also opened up the console because we're not going to put anything on the actual website, we're just going to print stuff to the console. So just to test that everything is working, I'm just going to do console.log hello, like that, and reload, and you can see hello prints out here. So that means that everything is actually working. Now we can actually get started creating the new network. Let's go back to the DanJS website and danjs.org to uh, use a bit of reference. Basically what we can do is initialize a neural network first, like let nn or anything you want to call it equals new dan, which is a class, right? We can initialize it. And now you can see that there's two numbers we need to pass it in. And what those mean is that the, how many inputs there are for this first number and how many outputs there are. For this very, very simple network, we're just going to do one input and one output. And now you can see that it has add hidden layers. And what that is, is basically the layers in between the input and output. As you can see that we basically, on the example that I drew before, we had um, like four or three or layers. So for this example, because the function uh, neural network is going to be pretty simple, let's just use uh, two layers, right? And the first number is the amount of neurons there, let's say uh, three, how about that? And then we can use the activation function, which is like the curving function that I talked about. And we can just do a sigmoid, which looks like an S shape. Let's just add another hidden layer that looks exactly identical, so another layer with three uh, inputs. And we're also going to give it an activation of sigmoid. And now what we have to do is take the output activation, which is the final like curving function that is spits out at the end, I guess. We don't need to add the output layer because when we initialize it, we already said that there's going to be uh, only one output. So that basically already initialized the output layer, but we can just change the activation, right? Activation. 
and we're also going to give it sigmoid. Great. So now we have actually done all of the neural network like creation stuff. There's one final thing that we need to call, which is make weight. And what that does is that it basically initializes all the weights randomly. So by default, all of those will be like randomly distributed between zero and one. Now there's two more things that I haven't talked about, two more values. First of all is LR, which stands for the learning rate. And learning rate, it depends on how fast, like basically how fast your network changes to adapt to the data. Because it's pretty simple, we're going to give it something like 0 0.1. The thing is, if you set it very high, it will learn very quickly, but also it might overshoot and over adjust. So basically, depending on the network you're making, you should just look at different options and see what works, like just test it out a few times. And then we can set the loss function. It's kind of like a score, kind of, right? For this, we can use a loss function called MSE, which is mean squared error. And what that means is basically you take the difference between the two outputs. Like if you wanted the output to be 5, but it actually gave you 3, the difference between the two would be 2. And then you square that difference, which would be 4. So the score or the cost, like how bad it is, is like 4. And you want to make this value as low as possible. So that would be the last function. And now what we can do is actually in.log, which basically tells you a bit like some data about the neural network. So let's just go back to our own website here and reload. And you can see that it has input layer one, hidden layers, there's, yeah, it's three neurons in each layer. There's two of those hidden layers. And then there's the output layer, which has one neuron or one output, and that's also sigmoid. And then there's other values. You can see that error rate is 0 0.1, loss function as I give it MSE, and current epoch is zero, latest loss is zero. Okay, now that we have created the neural network, of course, it's going to be completely random, but just for fun, let's just actually give it an input to see what it outputs. And you can do that with a feed forward option. So feed forward, like that. And then you're going to pass it in an array of inputs. And since we only have one input, right, we can just give it an array of one number. Let's say this time we're going to give it 25, just as an example. And then there's another parameter that you can optionally give, and that's an object and it has a lot of like configuration options right uh, basically it's just like how you want to display it and you can say log true which will mean that it actually logs it onto the console and then you can also say uh, decimals which is how many decimal places you want it to log and let's say uh, three like that so now if we save the file and reload you can see that when you pass it in 25 the output it gives you 0 0.396 if you reload again, it's going to give you random weights again, and this time it's 0 0.19. Now, of course, when you feed in numbers, it's just going to give you random numbers. But if you actually wanted to do something useful, you have to train the network so that it gives you and calculates stuff that you want. And the way you do that is backpropagation. It's a bit of complicated calculus, but luckily with DanJS, it's just one line of code. And what you can basically do is backpropagate, just call that function, backpropagate, like that and then you pass it in two arrays. The first array is the array of inputs and the second array will be the array of outputs. So let's, for this, let's just do uh, 25. And what do you want it to output? For this very simple network example, we can give it something like, we can use it to determine if a number is positive or not, right? So because 25 is positive, we we'll wanted to output one. And now what we can do is call this a lot of times to give it more examples, maybe negative two, will be zero. So it's not if it's not positive, it will be zero. If it's positive, it will be one. And then we can do something like 13, which will be one, and negative 27, which would be zero. Of course, we need a lot more training data than this. But what we can also do is basically calculate the loss. It's basically how bad something is. Console.log that, like this. And when we reload, you can see the loss is zero point something. So of course, it's not very good. But of course, we also need better, a lot more training data than just four examples. So instead of just calling it multiple times, I'm going to do it in a loop. So we can do something like four let i equals zero, i less than 1,000 maybe. We can do it 1,000 times, i plus plus. And now what we can do is get a random number first of all. So we can do like let x equals math.random. And math.random by default returns a number from 0 to 1. So what we can do is actually multiply it by 10. So it will give you a number that's 
basically from 0 to 10. And if you want negative numbers, we're going to subtract it by 5, so it gets two numbers from negative 5 to 5. Okay, so now we can do call the function n.batproppagate like that. And here we can give it two arrays like before. So first one will be x, and the second one will be whether the function was less than 0 or not. So we can do something like x less than 0, we can use a turn operator, I guess, and we can do like if it is less than zero, zero, or else one, and reload. You can see that when we feed forward twenty five, it gives you zero point eight something, which is good. And if you want to do something like negative twenty five, maybe it will give you something close to zero, but it's not exactly zero and one, but it is somewhat. You know, you can see that it's pretty good. So let's say zero, negative one. That will give you zero point one one something. If you do twelve thousand it will give you a number that's close to 1. So which means that this is actually working as expected. So now we basically created a very simple network. It is not, you can see, completely accurate. But what you can do is essentially say something like, if this is above 0 0.5, it will be 1. If it's less than 0 0.5, it will be 0. And it will be pretty active. So of course, this data is then really representative of like real world data but you can pass in any data set and as long as there's some correlation it should you know try and do something and try and intelligently match it so that now whenever you input new data that it has never seen before it will also predict it correctly for you just one more thing that i want to go over which is saving the function or saving the neural network because now every time you reload it is actually retraining the neural network and that is fine, I guess, but there's two problems with it. And first of all, it is very slow. You don't want to train it for bigger Dex data sets. So it might take hours to train. You don't want to train it every time you want to run it. And another thing is that there's a little bit of luck involved, right? Maybe you train something that was pretty good. You don't want to just like ruin it again every time, right? Maybe by chance you train something that you got very lucky and you just want to keep the network. So what you can do is very simple. There's a really cool function called to function like that. So and then to function, if you console dot log this, you can see what it gives you. It actually returns you this long function, which you can just copy and paste like that. Copy and paste. And here's the cool part. You can just paste this in, and you can see that it's just JavaScript code. And this is actually all you need for the function. You don't need to save anything. You don't need to load anything. This is just it. If you just copy and paste this, you can delete all of the lines above. You don't need the library anymore, right? You can delete the script. All you need is this one tiny function, which saves a lot of storage and memory. And if you want to use just like the correctly trained function in a network, this will be awesome. You can see that it's only a thousand characters, but the library will be like hundreds of thousands of characters. So. Now, what you can do is just call the function, right, and give it an input like uh, 2 and the console.log this. And you can see that it gives you a value which is close to 1. So, this actually works as your full neural network, which is awesome. So, this is basically the end of the video. If you learned something from this, definitely like and also subscribe. It helps me a lot because this is a pretty small channel. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.